This is a bit of a different video to the usual case studies, economics or finance news posted on business ventures. This video will cover a portfolio of a recently new investor with this current portfolio you will be seeing only being made nine months ago and has been slowly getting funded over the time. This being my first stock portfolio and my first time properly investing, I've learned a lot of lessons and made mistakes which have helped me hopefully gain a greater understanding of not just the stock market, but investing in general. I currently hold nine different stocks or ETFs in total, and will be doing another update in the future. Keep in mind, this is not financial advice, and this is strictly my portfolio and some lessons I've learned in this short time of investing. The largest position in this portfolio is VOO, which takes up 29%. This is Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, representing the 500 largest companies in the US based on market capitalization. This position was not my largest in the beginning, and for probably the first 5 months or so of having this account. I never invested into ETFs, but as I learned more about investing and took a step back and looked at the long term plan of this portfolio, diversifying and investing in the overall market next to the stocks I already own seem like the right idea. Investing in VOO is a long-term plan, as I might be able to beat the market over the short period with stocks such as Tesla and Microsoft. Over the long term, the task will get harder and harder. I currently have 2,827 US dollars or 3,945 Australian dollars in VOO, which also pays a nice dividend yield of 1.23% which is nicely growing the more I invest, and I've planned to reinvest all the dividends. I plan to grow this position to around 40% of my portfolio as I delegate more money to ETFs. My second largest position is in Apple, accounting for 20% of my portfolio. The tech giants were always a company I looked at and used myself, so I figured why not invest in a company I don't see going anywhere in the future. The company is so well positioned with multiple revenue streams coming in from sales to subscriptions. Apple has its hand in many baskets, such as the music industry with Apple Music, fitness industry with Apple Fitness Plus, and tech with its chips and products. Apple stock was actually the second stock I ever purchased, and I've been slowly adding more and more to my portfolio. As many analysts and people I watch believe this stock is overpriced, I personally believe in the moat and the direction the company is heading in the long term. I currently have 1,909 US dollars invested, or 2,664 Australian dollars. Apple is another one of my investments that pays me a small dividend, but as the same with VAO, all the dividends will continue to get reinvested. I don't plan on selling my Apple shares anytime soon, and the stock recently had another great run, rising nearly 16% in the last month. Another tech giant is my third largest position at 1,295 US dollars or 1,807 Australian dollars, and it is Microsoft, at 14% of my portfolio. Microsoft has had a great year, and one of my biggest regrets was not doing my research and investing more money into the, my position. At an average cost, of $271, which has been rising as I continue to make small deposits and buying more, especially at the end of September when the price dropped. Overall, this is another position I plan to hold for the long run, as Microsoft will not be going anywhere soon. They continue to grow their revenue, grow their dividends, and increase their cash flow, whilst carrying enough cash to pay off all debt with ease. My next largest position is in a company that has been under the light in recent times and has made a massive change in the company, changing its name from Facebook to Meta. The social media giant takes up 10% of my portfolio, is worth 954 US dollars or 1,332 Australian dollars. Facebook stock saw a massive price fall around the mid-September with the entire whistleblower saga and the name change situation. As someone who had a very small amount in Facebook prior to this drop, I saw this as an opportunity to load up on more, as I believed this was all a short-term issue 
that wasn't going to have a long-term lasting effect on the company. One thing people seemed to struggle with when investing in Facebook was that they didn't see it as a parent company that owned groups of successful businesses such as Instagram, WhatsApp and Oculus to name a few. So hopefully this name change to Meta will allow investors to look past just Facebook brand and see the overall company. I've doubled down and tripled my position to what it is now and wouldn't mind purchasing some more as I still see this as a long-term success. The next investment is definitely on more of the speculative side in comparison to the other investments in my portfolio and that is in the Chinese giant Alibaba at 6% of my portfolio. This stock has had a horrible year falling 50% over more and more bad news about Chinese government and regulations the business will have to face. Even with this risks, many super investors still believe in this company and believe that the Chinese government will not prevent this amazing company from expanding or even being able to be purchased from foreign investors. Not too long ago, I was actually up on this position, but due to recent bad news and negative earnings, this stock again dropped. My position is worth around 589 US dollars or 822 Australian dollars. I luckily only started investing in this stock more recently, so my average cost is around 165, which is still 24% off today's price, but is a lot better than people who I've seen purchase this stock earlier in the year. I still see the potential in this company and believe in them in the long run, so how this investment goes can only be judged on a 5 to 10 year span and I have not allocated a large amount of capital towards it, with it only taking up 6% of my portfolio. Another tech giant has found its way into my portfolio, being the monopoly that is Alphabet or Google. This is a stock that has had an amazing year, with its year to date being up 63%. Another stock I was a little late to and was scared off by the crazy numbers the stock was doing. It seemed every time I checked it, it was up. I would invest my money elsewhere. This was until I did more research and decided I wasn't able to pass up on this amazing company just because the stock price was going up. I currently have 540 US dollars invested or 754 Australian dollars, which is 6% of my portfolio. Alphabet is practically responsible for the majority of the information we learn every single day. Whenever you need to learn something, the first phrase people say is just Google it. Or if you are looking for a video to explain how things work, they also happen to own YouTube. The company is a money printing machine and the ad revenue doesn't seem to be slowing down. Around September, the stock started to cool off a bit and during the slow time, I decided it was time to add. Little by little, I added and it has grown to what it is now. I plan on still adding to this position over the long run. The second ETF in my portfolio is one I very recently opened a position in and plan to grow the longer this portfolio is active, and that is QQQ at 8% of my portfolio. PowerShares QQQ Trust Series 1 is a unit investment trust that issues securities called the NASDAQ 100 Index Tracking Stock. The NASDAQ has been killing the S&P and Dow Jones in recent times, with the, and with the largest position of my portfolio being the S&P, I figured why not still diversify in an ETF that is a little more focused on larger companies. My goal is to get this position to around 20% of my portfolio, so that 20% of QQQ and 40% of VOO ensure that 60% of my portfolio is in ETFs, and that I am diversified. The NASDAQ has also destroyed the S&P and Dow Jones over recent years, having a 22.67% compounded annual return over the last decade. QQQ consists of majority of information technology stocks, which does worry me a little bit, as my portfolio is already heavily invested in tech, hence why I also plan on growing my S&P position, to help counteract this issue as I look for good opportunities to diversify into different sectors. Some of QQQ's largest holdings include some of my very own staples, such as Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, and Alphabet, and one of my previous positions in Tesla. The last two positions in my account 
are both in the financial sector, and that is Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. My Goldman position is worth around $273 US dollars and 3% of my portfolio, and my JP Morgan position is worth around $378 and 4% of my portfolio. These have both been recent purchases, and I don't know if I will hold them for long. I've been honest. These investments were mainly sponsored by the extra money I found myself with after selling out of my Tesla position and wanting somewhere to allocate the extra cash. Both pay a good dividend and will be further assessed in the future to know if I still want my money in these two companies for the long run. And if not, I might just use this capital to further invest in my ETFs as I believe they will perform better over the long run and relieve the extra stress and effort of checking earnings and monitoring both stock performances. Overall, those are my nine positions currently active in my portfolio. I've sold and bought in and out over these past few months as I've been learning more about investing and the type of investor I want to be. My goal is to be more of a long-term investor and put my money in companies I still see being around and growing over an extended period of time. I've tried it all from small startups to blue chips to dividend stocks. When I began, I believe 40% of my portfolio was Tesla and another 25 was Nia. Both companies that have seen great growth and still have space to grow, but I believe selling out of Nia and moving my money elsewhere was the right decision. And I believe selling Tesla when I did was also a good decision. I still believe in Tesla in the long term and hope the price falls again so I can reinvest. But from a numbers standpoint, removing my capital and taking my profits seem like the wise decision to make. You might wonder why I only invest in US stocks. And you can see, I use stake. This is because when I began, I found it way easier to find information on investments and personally found the companies more interesting. Six out of nine positions pay me a dividend, which is not something I'm focused on, but it is nice to see the growth of the snowball and more. In the future, I might make a video tracking my dividends and seeing how much they will grow and possibly be able to cover my expenses someday in the vast future. Overall, this is my portfolio as a teenager that I began in February 2021. In total, it's worth 9,573.09 cents in US dollars or 13,359 and 5 cents in Australian dollars. My goal was to get this portfolio to 10,000 Australian dollars before the end of the year. After saving pretty much every penny, I broke this goal earlier in the year. So at the moment, I'm saving that extra money and buying some things I've wanted throughout the year and saving for Christmas gifts and any other end of year expenses that always seem to pop up. Hopefully this video was insightful and showed you a more modest sized portfolio that will hopefully continue growing as the years progress. I will continue to post updates on this channel. I would love to hear your thoughts on my portfolio and leave a like and subscribe to Business Ventures for more weekly case studies and economics and financial news.